India's Tata Group is making an $11 billion push to build the country's first commercial semiconductor fab in Dolera in the state of Gujarat. It is teaming up with Taiwan's PSMC to manufacture chips for AI and autos, with the first Made in India wafer set to roll out in 2026. For a deeper look at how India-Taiwan joint ventures will impact the semiconductor industry, we are joined by Gauri Kapoor. She's the Taiwan country head of Tata Consultancy Services, or TCS. Great to have you on the program, Gauri. I will start with uh, just simply asking you, what is TCS's offering in the semiconductor space? So TCS is working with the top eight semiconductor companies in the world. So we are there from the design phase to the fab to the OSETs. We have our a large group of employees, which is specifically focusing in the semiconductor area. And for obvious reasons, because that's the future of the world right now. We have our own IOTDE practice, which is looking at innovation in these areas, and definitely work with, working with our partners, uh, Tata Electronics, across multiple programs to um, ensure we are tightly coupled in the India's vision. And when you talk about innovations, what kind of innovations do you have on the horizon right now that you feel Taiwan semiconductor companies can really benefit from? So definitely not only Taiwan, it is for the globe as well. We have our offering which is called as TCS Semiconductor in a Box. So when I speak to most of my customers who are coming or opening um, uh, their operations, either in the area of design or the FAB or the OSATs, the common issue they have been talking about is when we come to India, there are a lot of vendors we need to speak to. And for us to actually integrate all of that into one single working system is diversifying ourselves from a core business and trying to get this done. How can you help us TCS? So that's where was the birth of this TCS semiconductor in a box happened, where we provide uh, very easy one-stop solution to customers, which has everything on the play, starting from your supply chain, to your uh, uh, data analytics, to your cyber security, to your ERPs, all in a box. And then bundled with our specialized skills in the digital engineering smart factory areas as well. Okay, so let's flip this around. India's uh, semiconductor industry is still in developmental phase compared to Taiwan's very mature ecosystem. Where are you seeing the opportunities for Taiwan's companies in India? So definitely, uh, we need a lot of coupling with Taiwan companies. As I said, they are the best in the hardware manufacturing. And uh, India is looking for that kind of collaboration to get that skill with respect to their processes, the precision, their IP protection, and, uh, and the kind of uh, the real skills they bring in to the country. So there are a lot of collaborations which are happening across multiple sectors. Semiconductor is just one of them. There are collaborations in the design, in the OSAT, in the banking sector, and uh, as well as there's a lot of collaboration which is happening for the academics as well. So a lot of Taiwanese companies are directly recruiting uh, from India. They're also influencing the different curriculums, what they need based on the skill set or the future skills, what they are seeing in. So those are the different areas where uh, Taiwan and India are working together. Now, you mentioned and, and you spoke about this briefly earlier and you gave some superlative uh, statistics on India, on its workforce, on its uh, future capabilities, and then compare that to Taiwan's, uh, I guess, aging population and, and the danger of the expertise here uh, basically fading out if they don't have people to pass it on to. How much, how much are you seeing the momentum in, in getting that younger workforce in India to collaborate with Taiwan's more mature ecosystem? That's a great question, Devya, because uh, in multiple forums, I'm hearing this, that we should increase the collaboration between India and Taiwan and get these young forces in Taiwan. We should step back and see what is the kind of collaboration which is already happening between India and Taiwan. So India and Taiwan are, are collaborating at multiple areas. What is missing is the understanding of the people on these areas of collaboration. 
generally these conversations are only happening in the boardrooms and the masses are not aware of the various areas where this collaboration is happening. So what we need here and that also becomes very attracted attractive for the India uh, young generation to come to Taiwan is to create that single source of truth, a single registry, a live registry, which talks about different things. As I said, where are we collaborating? Semiconductor, we are collaborating in banking sector, we are collaborating with res respect to academics, we are looking at various events which are happening to actually get India-Taiwan together. But there is no single space of truth which gives that view for common man to get that appreciation both in Taiwan as well as in India to attract that talent coming into Taiwan. So I think there is something which needs a lot of focus and even for Indian government advertising more uh, about their government policies, about the incentives, about what kind of uh, benefits it can give to Taiwan. I think that advertisement I wouldn't use the word advertisement. I would rather say a more awareness about those kind of aspects is very important. Right now, there are very limited people. Uh, people who are actually doing business know about it. But what is important is people who are not doing business to know about this. How much of a barrier is language in India-Taiwan collaboration? I want to tell you what I tell my customers, okay? If two people love each other, speaking different languages. How do they communicate? Only emotion and feelings is the language of communication. Similarly, the language of work is intent. If you intend to work with me and I intend to work with you, we will find common grounds in this AI world. So language should not be a constraint for starting up work between India and Taiwan. But on the operational side, if we look, there are 39 centers in India set up by Taiwan to teach Mandarin language. So there's a conscious effort which is being done from Taiwan side to ensure that they have that language with India. Similarly, India is also ensuring that they have the workforce and have the colleges as Mandarin as one of the optional languages to learn. So both nations are putting in that kind of effort. Lot of bilingual events which are happening, lot of trade exchanges which are happening, which is definitely narrowing this gap. And definitely in the AI world, we can work out if you really want to work out. So in, in that sense, then let's 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 take a look at um, down the horizon. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about India rolling out its first India made way first next year. From that, what kind of industries or collaborations can you see beyond semiconductors with Taiwanese companies can India look forward to? So definitely once the semiconductor fab is operational, there is that opens opportunities to the world, specifically in the supply chain area. We need a very resilient supply chain area. And if Taiwan and India collaborate, they give a very strategic and a promising alternate to the world in the supply chain area. And the entire suit of companies, suit of products which are needed for a semiconductor company would, give, would have an opportunity to have Taiwanese companies come to India. And, and are you feeling that momentum? Are there Taiwanese, more and more Taiwanese companies poised to enter India and vice versa? Definitely. I've been part of multiple events. And the kind of questions, see, how do you understand the interest is? It happens when the questions come in from people, come in from industries. So there are a lot of questions coming to us on what capabilities does India have in this area, in that area, which definitely shows that this momentum is increasing. And once we have you know, uh, the proof of the pr uh, pudding there in place, I'm sure that there'll be a lot of such opportunities there. All right. So in that sense, what would you say are the challenges in scaling India-Taiwan collaborations? To be honest, I don't see it as a challenge. I see it as an opportunity. I see that both governments are already aligned with each other. Right? There are a lot, uh, uh, lot of exchanges happening with respect to regulations. So the challenge is not in the collaboration. The challenge is in the mindset of the people who are not aware on how these collaborations are happening. 
Right. And you touched on this finally, and this is something just to throw forward again and looking into the future. You talked about this single space of truth. So given that, and, and you've given us a bit of background on that, but to clearly understand what would be the ideal situation to allow India and Taiwan to continue this collaboration and perhaps continue this momentum, what would that single space of truth be? So my idea is definitely to have this common area where we talk about and integrate all the touch points between India and Taiwan. This is basically for creating that visibility and generating higher momentum. But there also needs to be a committee which is formed by Taiwanese, by Indians and by one-stop solution providers like TCS and other, other service providers to give that ease to Taiwanese companies as you know their uh, reach out group where they can reach out with all their queries, not just going to the government and waiting for responses, then going to a tech company and asking for it, then going to a startup company or a supply chain company and then are getting those answers. Instead, have a one-stop uh, shop solution for them. Mm -hmm.